Hello everyone, here is an example problem to help you with the high-low method and regression analysis question on your homework for this chapter. In this question, we have Catherine McCarthy. She is the sales manager of Baxter Arenas, and she is checking to see if there's any relationship between promotional costs and ticket revenues at the sports stadium in which she works. She's going to go through and she's going to look at the historical data they have to find the relationship between how much they spent on promotional costs and how much they end up generating revenues from ticket sales. And she went through and she found those figures from January through September, which are all listed in the chart here. And we can see a quick relationship just looking at this. The more that Baxter spends on promotional costs, the more ticket revenues they generate. This is useful uh, because it gives us a data set to look at where we can obtain some information that helps us project a number for an estimate in the future. And we can do that in a couple of ways. The first way is the high-low method. And high-low is an approximation method. Basically, it's going through and it's looking at a data set and allowing you to use that information to do some quick, dirty napkin math, if you will, to come up with a projection that is fairly close. So in the high-low method, we need to figure out what we are going to have at our highest observation for each of these two variables, ticket revenues and promotion costs, what we have at our lowest observation, and therefore what is our delta, or the difference between high and low. Before we do this, we want to determine what our x variable and what our y variable are. And the rule of thumb, x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable, I've also heard it say x is the explanatory variable and y is the response variable. No matter what you want to label them, the rule that always holds true is that x makes y change. So whatever variable that you label as your x should be the thing that is causing your other variable to be modified. And in this case, what we're seeing, what we saw in the chart, is the more we spend on promotion costs, the more we generate in ticket revenues. Therefore, promotion costs have to be our independent variable, while ticket revenues have to be our dependent variable because they depend on how much revenue we make depends on how much we spend in promotional costs. So we have our x variable and our y variable. We're going to find the highest observation of the driver, the thing that causes our revenues to change. So the highest observation of promotional costs is fancy accounting lingo for saying the month in which we spend the most money on promotion. And as we can see from our information, the month when we spent the most on promotion was in September when we spent $197,000. The month when we spent the lowest amount on promotion, according to our information, was back in January where we only spent $52,000. So the delta, the difference between those two numbers, is $197,000 minus $52,000, that is $145,000. For ticket revenues, we're looking for what revenues were when we spent that promotion or what level of Y we achieved for that level of X. So when we spent $197,000 on promotion costs, the revenues for Baxter Arena were $751,000. When we spent the lowest level of promotion costs, when we only spent $52,000 back in January, we generated $200,000 worth of ticket revenues, which means we have a difference, our delta in our revenues of 551 grand. A $145,000 increase in promotion cost caused us to experience an extra $551,000 in revenues. Well, we can use this information to determine our slope, which is how much Y changes for each change in X, or in our case, how much revenues are expected to go up for each additional dollar we spend in promotional costs are constant, the amount that we're going to experience even if we don't spend promotional costs. I mean, there are people that are just going to walk by the arena and say, oh, snap, there's a basketball game going on, I'm going to go watch that. So there should be a constant level of revenue we have even without the influence of promotional costs. And to do this, we can use a couple of formulas. Firstly, slope is always your delta y or your change in y divided by, get my cursor out of the way, your change in x. So in our case, we had a $551,000 increase in revenues when we spent an extra $145,000 in promotion costs. If we <coughs> find the rate there, 
<coughs> that means that Baxter, on average, is experiencing an extra $3.80 in ticket revenues for every extra dollar of promotion cost that they spend. Constant is what we expect to experience even if we don't spend anything on promotion costs. And that is found by the formula that A, which is our constant, equals Y minus B times X, with B being our slope. So what do we have here then? Well, we can pick either level. It doesn't matter if we go high, highest observation, or we go low. It's going to come out to the same number. I'm going to start with the highest observation. And the highest observation, our Y ticket revenues was 751000 If we subtract from that B, which is our slope, which we just determined to be $3.80, times X, which was the amount of promotion cost that we paid for at uh, that level of ticket revenue of 197000 I'm going to come up with a constant of $2,400, saying we would experience $2,400 in ticket revenues if we never decided to promote ever again. I said earlier uh, that it doesn't matter if you pick high or low for your observation, you're going to come out to the same number. Let's just prove that. At our lowest observation, we had $200,000 in ticket revenues, our Y, minus our B, which is still 380, times our X of 52,000, comes out to be 2,400. So again, doesn't matter which one you pick, you're going to come up with the same constant. As long as you have your Y and your X in the right spots, you're going to come out there. So according to this high-low method, we get 2400 bucks regardless. And then for every extra dollar we spend on promotion costs, we're going to get an extra $3.80 in revenue. Well, going through and making a budget here, Baxter is saying, all right, we, we got to come up with a fixed number for promotion costs to stay within our budget. And that's going to be 175000 If we stick to that level, according to our historical information, what amount of revenue are we expected to see? And that is the good old regression equation. If you've taken elementary statistics, you have seen this. It is Y equals A plus B times X. So let's go and throw that in there. We're trying to figure out why. We're trying to figure out what our ticket revenues are, which is our Y variable. So if I go and I take my A, my constant of 2400, and multiply or add to it the product of our slope times the level of X we plan to spell, spend, and X is our promotion cost, so that level is 175,000. I'm going to come up with. 667,400. So if somebody came to you and they said, all right, this is, you know, when you had all this information in front of you and they said, we got 175 grand to spend, what are our expected revenues? Little quick calculation right here on a piece of paper with a pencil. If you're in a meeting or whatever, we'll determine that to your best guess, you're going to with $667,400 in revenue. The problem with the high-low method is it only observes two points and it makes it susceptible to what they call outliers. If you had eight months where there was really no significant trend in uh, sales increasing for promotion costs, like it was a little bit, but not a lot. And all of a sudden you had that ninth month where for some reason your revenues exploded, even though you spent more and the most money in promotional costs, like it, it doesn't line up proportionately probably another reason that it came in but because you're only using the high and the low that one month where you had a little increase in promotion costs for a massive explosion in revenues is greatly going to distort your numbers so the best way to do this the more refined way is to do a form a full regression analysis the problem with that is you can't do it on a napkin and quick in real time when you're sitting in a meeting uh, it takes a lot of calculations. You got to go through and find all of your deviations and all that stuff. That is, unless you are sitting on spreadsheet software, which fortunately we are. We're sitting here with Excel, which means I can use this table. If you set it up in this way where you have a Y column and an X column all nice and neat to use, you can go through and you can use one of the functionalities of Excel to do this very, very fast. But to do so, you have to make sure that you have 
this guy, the data analysis package installed. And it doesn't usually come pre-installed on Excel. Um, if you need to install it, how you get there is you hit file. You go down to options. In your options, there's going to be a bunch of stuff that pops up, but the one that you want is add-ins. It's all of your extra packages that Excel has that aren't by default available in the program. So we're going to click that and a bunch of stuff pops up. And the one that we want is the analysis tool pack up on the top. At the bottom it says manage Excel add-ins with a go next to it. Click that go. When you click that go, this list pops up. And there's a solver, there's all of this fun stuff. The one we want is just the analysis tool pack on the top, so make sure it's checked and hit OK. And if you didn't have data analysis over there on the data tab on the top, it should pop up. You should have it now. And with that, we can rock and roll. We can use that data analysis package to figure out what our slope and our constant are, taking into consideration not just the high and low month, but all nine months. So I'm going to go. I'm going to fire up this data analysis thing. And it gives us a world of options that you will learn in a bunch of different statistics classes. We have ANOVAs, we have covariances, we have moving averages, we have F-tests, we got a whole bunch of stuff. If you don't know about it, it's interesting stuff to learn about if you're into uh, analytics, but the one that we want is regression. So click on regression, hit OK, and it says input Y range, input X range. What numbers, uh, values of Y do you want to factor into your calculations? What values of X? Well, we want them all. So if I scroll up over here, make sure that I'm in the input Y range thing. Our Y's that we want to check are ticket revenues for each and every month. So I go through and I make sure that all of them are in there. We're going to do cells B4 through B12. Our X range is the promotional cost. We had X promotional cost is our X variable. We want to factor in all nine months of promotion costs. I'm going to grab cells C4 through C12. And now all I got to do is hit OK. And when I do that, this crazy sheet pops up. This is our summary output. It took those variables that we put in, making these a little bigger so we can read them, and it did a whole bunch of stuff. It found our coefficient of determination, our standard error. Again, we don't care about any of that. We care about just two things, and they are these numbers down here. The intercept is where we cross the y-axis. What is that? That is the amount that we get if X, the amount of uh, promotional cost we have, is zero. That's where we'll cross the Y axis. That number right there is our A. X variable, one over here, is how much Y increases when the X variable increases by one. That is our B. Don't ask me why they label them this way. They just did. So under coefficients on the left side, A, B. And you can take those numbers and throw them right into the template that I provide you with. Uh, down here, if we go, our slope, our B in this case, is equal to, I'm going to go back to that sheet that popped up for our summary output, $3.54 and a bunch of change. You don't even need to round off. Just click on it and bring it on over. The constant that we have in this case is how much we get. When we cross the intercept, it's $65,582.70 and some microscopic change. So I'm going to click on that, I'm going to hit enter, and we have our A and our B. Again, our formula, just like we had above, is Y equals A plus BX. So here we have our A, our constant of $65,582.70, plus our B, which is $3.54 for each additional dollar we spend, times our X. And this part is asking you, what they expect their ticket revenues to be for 100,000, 125,000, 150,000, and 175,000, respectively. I'm going to click on that 100,000. So now we have 65,582.70 plus $3.54 times 100,000 at $100,000 promotion costs. Baxter Arena can expect to generate $419,783.47 worth of revenue. Next up, we got 125,000, and we can do the same thing here. It's going to be y equals a plus bx. I always want a and b to be the same, right? Because no matter what amount of promotion costs we put in, our constant is still 65,582.70. Our slope is still $3.54. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the F4 key right now. 
hopefully over here, if it's going to work for me, it's going to make the reference absolute. We're going to have dollar signs in there. Uh, if you have one of those computers where F4 wants to be your mic mute, you might have to hold down the FN, the function button, to get it to certain absolute, but it, you'll know it works when it's dollar sign, you know, B dollar sign cell number in this case, which we have. So, our formula is A plus BX. We want our A to always be the same. We want our B to always be the same. So I'm going to click on B again, and then I'm also going to make that absolute by hitting my F4 key. There we go. And then I'm going to multiply that by X. And this thing we do want to change, so I'm not going to make this absolute. We're still, in this case, for 125,000, taking that uh, constant that we have, 65,582.70, and adding to it the product of our slope of $3.54 plus the amount of promotion cost, in this case 125 grand, comes out to be $508,333.67. And now that I have those two cells absolute, they won't change when I fill handle. It'll always use exactly those cells. But the cell that's not absolute, which is cell A40, 125,000 here, when I fill handle, it will change in the same pattern. So when I drag this down one by using the fill handle in the bottom right corner, the formula is going to stay the same for our A, the same for the B, but it's going to change since I dragged down one for our answer. It's going to drag this down one to 150,000. I can do that again down here. And we've determined that Baxter Arena, if they spend $150,000 in promotional costs, can expect to generate revenues of $596,883.86. And if they spend $175,000, they can expect to generate revenues of $685,434.06. And that is the same point we predicted at over here. That's not an insignificant difference. When we take everything into consideration, we can expect our prediction for revenues to be $18,000 higher than before. Using regression analysis is always a better number than the high-low approximation method. They just you need to have more tools at your disposal and more time to calculate it.